Hi, I'm Dr. Gloria Richard Davis. I'm a fertility specialist. I also specialize in perimenopause, menopausal care, along with other women health specialty at UMS. So polycystic ovarian syndrome is really a compilation of three different um, things that patients usually present with. Irregular bleeding, um, some excess hair growth, whether it's on the face or on other parts of the body, and infertility, obesity. Those are really the, the symptoms that patients will come in with polycystic ovarian syndrome. We do an initial evaluation to ensure that they are not pre-diabetic or diabetic because that's really the uh, other end of diabetes. It's like the early part and the end stage. That's where PCOS really fits. When we evaluate the patients and um, identify them as being pre-diabetic, then I actually start metformin. I start that oral treatment and nutrition counseling. If they are not hyperinsulinemic, then typically it's addressing their areas of concern in two different prongs. Are they coming in because of infertility? Or are they coming in because of irregular bleeding? And that really takes us down two different paths. If they're just having irregular bleeding, they're not interested in getting pregnant, then we talk about management of that irregular bleeding. If they're interested in getting pregnant, then that takes me down the path of we have to induce ovulation because the reason why they're not having regular periods is they're not ovulating. So we have to correct the ovulatory problem in order for them to get pregnant. For most polycystic ovarian patients, simply using oral fertility drugs works. It works probably in about 80% of them. If, however, the patient fails to respond to oral medications, then we move up the ladder to using injectable fertility medications. And by and large, we can get every woman who still has eggs left to ovulate. There is a genetic predisposition to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if you look at your family tree, you can probably find other women who have the same uh, phenotype the obesity, the excess hair, we all have some of it. And the ethnic makeup also uh, contributes to the facial hair. So there are certain groups that have a higher incidence of hirsutism. In my polycystic ovarian syndrome patients, one of the things that I always do is to talk about nutrition and do a uh, dietary consult, a nutrition consult because the foods that they choose to eat may in fact continue to contribute to their ability to not lose weight. Um, the hyperglycemic foods continues to spike the insulin and really directs more of their calories in fat, and they need to understand that.